promised us that he would be a father and would love us with a love that would not cease. I tried him and I found his promises are true. He's everything. Well, glory be to the Most High God. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am Elder Jesse Darrow, and this is Carrier of His Presence broadcast. I feel that I have such an exciting word today for leaders. And you know, if you've been around me long enough, you know when I say leader, if you're born again, if you're born of God's spirit, you are a leader. Someone is looking up to you. You are an example. You are a uh, standard barrier. There's something inside of you that has purpose. And the Lord has something for you to do so that you can lead someone beyond where they are right now. What really, really got my attention was all the madness that's going on in Washington. I sit and I looked and I listened, not just with my natural hearing, but with my spiritual hearing as well. And what really got my attention, fact, fiction, you know, when it's, we're talking about the media reporting, we only get a portion of what the truth really is, and that is my opinion. Nonetheless, something that really caught my spiritual sensing was when one of the commentators said that the House Speaker Boehner did not have the boldness to stand up against the Tea Party. Now you're saying, now, uh, how in the world can a spiritual or Christian broadcast end up into a political discussion? This will not be a political discussion. But when I heard that, the first thing that came to my mind was first natural then spiritual first natural then spiritual so whatever is taking place in the natural realm is a very strong possibility that it is not taking place that it have not taken place that it will take place in the spirit realm so for the people of God one of the things that I thought we would discuss today as a leader of the most high God learning to stand alone because if it is true about House Speaker Boehner that if he had stood up against the Tea Party, the government would not be in the condition that it is in. I think it's the same concept applies that if we have the principles that we need to stand alone, I believe that there will be more soldiers for Jesus Christ who learn to stand alone. Now, don't nobody misunderstand me. Standing alone will cause you to sweat, or it can cause you to sweat. So as I thought about the broadcast today and as I meditated, a couple of scriptures came to my mind, and the Lord reminded me that there is an unseen angelic host that is at our disposal. And when he had put us out front, and we're in a position to where we've got to take a stand for righteousness, we have to believe that the Lord is there, the Spirit is there, to bring us the comfort and to teach us, to guide us. But we also have an unseen angelic host encamped round about us as, as well to protect us so that we would not take some of the hits that we would if their presence was not there. The first thing came to my mind was 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, around the 16th verse. Can you remember when the king of Assyria was coming up against Elisha? I mean, it's like Elisha was really, really disturbing the king of Syria at that time because the Lord was showing him, the Lord was showing Elisha what was going on in the kingdom. So when the king of Assyria was talking in his bedchamber, the Lord was showing it what was being said to Elisha. And so I'm sure it was out of fear to make sure that they were able to uh, subdue Elisha. This army, this great army came 
to Dothan to get Elisha. And so Elisha's servant looked up and he saw this great army, this great host coming. And so I, you know, I, I, I'm going to tell this my way. I can see Elisha laid back, all savvy and calm. And he's saying, look, go look again. I, I want Lord open this servant's eyes so that this servant can see that they that's with us are more than they that be with them. Now in the natural, they were outnumbered in the natural, but in the spirit realm, to me, we are never alone. As a matter of fact, I believe, and I live by this, when I have to stand alone, I feel that I am among the multitude. And that multitude being the Holy Ghost and the angelic host that I believe that the Lord will send forth to protect me. And then to balance that, I remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, only minutes away from Calvary. And the army came to, or the soldiers came to arrest him. So naturally, Peter, not understanding exactly what was going on, and even though the Lord had said many times, for this cause came, I enter the world. So Peter draws his sword, and the Lord said, ah, oh, nah, 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 you're, you're, you're getting it wrong. You're missing it. Put, put the sword back in the sheath. He said, did you not know that if I asked my father that he would send 12 legions, legions of angels 12 legions to protect me. So at our disposal, I figure as Jesus is, so are we in this world. We have about 72,000 angels at our disposal. That's just good news. That's exciting. Glory be to God. And it should encourage leaders to be able to stand alone. Because if I'm hearing and sensing what I believe that I'm hearing and sensing in the spirit realm, the Lord is raising up leaders now that will not get caught up in the status quo of things. And he is having us to stand what appears to be by ourselves, but it's not by ourselves. So what I did, glory be to God, was I wrote down a few nuggets that I want to share with leaders now remember, I'm not talking about bishops and pastors and elders and deacons alone. I feel, I teach, and I believe. If you're born of God's spirit, you are a leader. You have to be the torch bearer, the standard bearer. You have to be the one, the drum major, glory be to God, for someone. And see, let's not, let's not confuse a lot of people following you with two or three that needs what you have at a particular time. So if you will just remember these few nuggets, standing alone will not be quite as uh, difficult and challenging as it can be if you understand these few nuggets. A leader who stands alone stands out. Joshua and Caleb stood against 10 leaders. I mean, the leaders did want to, the, the, the people did want to stone Joshua and Caleb. So I'm not trying to let you uh, uh, lead someone out on the cliff, so to speak, and leave you hanging. Leaders who stand alone stand out. But you remember, you're in or among a multitude. There's also legions of angels. There is that angelic host that is encamped round about us and the Holy Ghost is leading us. So we can't be deceived by what we see nor by what we feel. And I think Joshua and Caleb understood that God said it, that settled it, and so that was the end of it. So if we stand alone, we're going to stand out. I also remember Daniel. I mean, Daniel took a stand against the governmental authority of his day. Now, again, we're not talking about ease. We're talking about courage. We're not talking about ease. And if we are trying to find a place of ease, we will never be the bold leaders that the Lord have called us to. 
And I'm always amazed when I read the sixth chapter of Daniel and when this decree went forth. Daniel did what he always did, which was pray three times a day, even though a decree went forth that no one was to pray except to the king. And so when we stand alone, we tend to stand out. And, and, and we end up in the enemy's crosshairs. But my God, what can the enemy do to us unless the Lord allows it? If the Lord allows it, then the Lord has a higher purpose for us for this particular season in our lives. I remember Jesus. Let's not forget our Lord. He stood up against the religious hierarchy. Come on now, let's keep it real. We don't even want to go to our earthly leaders, one, and say anything when we know that they are wrong. This, this man, Jesus, stood up against a religious hierarchy. But he, even though he was crucified, he knew that that was going to happen because he said too many times, for this cause came I into this world. So it wasn't like it was something that blindsided him. He knew his purpose. He fulfilled his purpose, and so him standing up caused him to stand out. He stood alone, and it caused him to stand out. Something else that leaders will do. Leaders who stand alone know that courage and cowardice are both contagious. So uh, something that's contagious, it, sp uh, it spreads from person to person upon contact. When you see someone that is courageous, that can be contagious. When you see someone that is cowardice, that too is contagious. Now, you already know if you listen to the broadcast a lot, I often use Saul and David as a comparison. Do you know that the Philistines came up against Israel under King Saul's leadership? And for 40 days, the Philistines talk much garbage to Israel, much threatenings and et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera. Well, King Saul did not do anything. He did not consult the Lord. He did not go into battle after consulting the Lord. And so the people became afraid and did nothing as well. David comes along. Now we're talking about courage is contagious. David comes along, a shepherd boy. What does he see? He sees Goliath a threatening and coming up against the army of God, defying the army of God. And so David said, wait a minute, what's going on here? No, 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 no. We got to bring this guy down. And so he did. And, and I'm putting it in my own terms. The point that I'm getting to is, if you think about it, after David slew Goliath, then his fame started spreading. Why? Courage is courageous, but so is cowardice. It is courageous. God have not called us to be a coward soldier. The Lord have told us to be bold in the spirit, to be mighty, to stand on the principles of the scriptures, to stand on the principles of Jesus Christ. So since David was courageous, listen to what happened. Under David's leadership, Adino slew 800 men. Now these men that came to David were they were discontented they were dis i mean they were in debt there were so many uh, uh issues that these guys had but under david's leadership because of his courage in time adino slew 800 men eliezer also one of david's soldiers fought for so long that the scripture says his spear or sword stuck to his hand. Now, you know what? Now, that's some, come on now. That's some serious fighting. That you can, you can slay 800 men with boldness. And that you can fight for so long that your sword or spear sticks to your hand. 
<laughs> Let me see where that is found. For your own reading, read 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. Get excited about what God can use you for and what God can uh, cause you to stir up in the lives of his people. Because I guarantee you, if you stand alone, you're going to stand out. I guarantee you that your courage is going to be contagious. It's going to influence someone else. It's going to give someone else the boldness that they need to do the work that the Lord have called them to. Something else, another nugget. We become a leader long before we receive a title. Before David became king of Israel, David was a leader. It was built in him. Uh, before our Lord went to Calvary, he grew in wisdom and stature. So before we get the title, Messiah, King of King, Lord of Lords, Adonai, before we get these titles, the Lord had put that leadership ability in us. First leadership ability, it grows, it develops. We make mistakes. Oh my goodness, I remember so many times my intentions was very honorable, but my application smelled real bad. I have made so many mistakes, but you know the Lord had put some of the most phenomenal teachers, some of the most loving leaders in my path to help me grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I have been pastored, I have been mentored, and I have also been uh, uh, mentored by both men and women. And both men and women have a different take on the spiritual applications, but I tell you what, they were phenomenal and I've learned so much from them. So before I ever became elder, before I was ever licensed and ordained, before the Lord ever moved supernaturally in my life, I was a leader and I had to be developed in, in leadership, but I had to be developed by another leader that is hearing from God, that is obeying God, and that knows how to take someone in the direction that the Lord desires them to go into. Oh, another nugget. A leader who stands alone brings others to a point of decision. A leader who stands alone will bring others to a point of decision. Again, standing alone is not easy, but it is the requirement of a leader. If we are going to be in one accord with ourselves, with our mind, and with our heart, there are some things that we are called to do that's just not comfortable. And so in standing alone, it will force others to come to a place of decision because it's like, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this. I'm not even considering it. Just like the three Hebrew boys. Look, King, you know what? I ain't bowing down. I am not bowing down. And so what it does, it forces others to make a decision as well. When Elijah stood up before the prophets of Baal, Elijah said, look, if God is Lord, serve him. Then if Baal, serve him. But stop vacillating between two opinions. So the people heard Elisha, even though the Lord did a tremendous work to manifest his power and his strength. The point is, is that even at that time when there's no judicial system, except what Ahab and Jezebel uh, determined was a judicial system. Elijah took the chance and he stood up. So our standing up will bring others to make a decision. And I'm, I'm so mindful, so very mindful of how difficult standing alone is. But if you are a leader, if you are born of God's spirit, standing alone is something that you're going to have to do at times. Whether it's with our family, whether it's in our on our job, 
whether it's in our church home. There are times when we are going to have to take a stand for righteousness, take the hit, and watch the Lord work whatever that situation is out. Because somehow or another, sometimes I'm under the impression that we think that we're going to get around suffering. I don't know where that idea came from. I don't think that we are called to a bed of ease. I really think that with evil spreading so the way it is in our culture, that what I'm telling you today, I'm sure that I'm going to be called to another level of standing alone. You look to be lied on. You look to be misunderstood. You look to lose companions along the way. And the reason I'm saying companions is because if someone is really your friend, they're going to respect that there's some things that you can't do. They're going to respect that this is who you are. It's nothing personal. It's just who you are and what you have to do. So it's not like this is an easy lifestyle that the Christian is called to. But I'll tell you what. It is a glorious one. It is a re warding one. It is a fulfilling one, especially when we walk in our purpose. Another nugget. A good leader must learn to stand alone because your perspective and your vision will be different from others. Leaders must learn to stand alone because your perspective and your vision is going to be different from others. As a teacher, something that was very disturbing to me was preaching on Sunday, preaching at Bible study, preaching in Sunday school. And so my uh, first experience in the Lord was preaching on Sunday, but Sunday school and Wednesday night Bible class, the scriptures was explained and there wasn't opportunity to be able to ask questions. Well, I really needed to be there because I had so many questions to ask and I had opportunity to ask those questions. And I also had someone that was sound doctrinally enough to answer those questions for me. So I'm seeing all of this preaching, but I'm not seeing an opportunity for people to ask questions. And so the Lord gave me a vision to establish Dunamis Evangelistic Outreach. My husband had been telling me for years, he said, your dissatisfaction is coming because you're not doing what the Lord have called you to do. Well, I mean, what do you mean? I am teaching. Yes, I, I, I was teaching. But he said that what you are called to do is to teach more people and to establish your own ministry. Well, that was definitely not what I wanted to do. But he saw that. I did not see that. As time rocked on, I was able to tap into the instructions of my husband. And so he and I started a ministry to where I spend time in the presence of God, get a dynamic message for the people of God, and then I bring the message and it gives the people an opportunity to ask questions. So it's an interactive type teaching. Now, Probably someone somewhere else. I can't believe that the Lord only gave me that vision. But I do know that oftentimes when we stand alone, we're going to have to carry out a vision that nobody else sees and no one else understands. So even though Dunamis is a small, Dunamis is a mighty ministry because the people are growing. They understand ascension living. They understand that we are not just called to get into a religious rut but we are to call to operate in our gifting and in our calling so the people have to be trained. Amen. So don't let the fact that your perspective and your vision stands out or you have to stand alone in order to operate in the vision that the, God, that the Lord has given you. If you stand alone, you're going to stand out. But that's not a bad thing. Because don't forget your angelic hosts. They're just waiting to come forth to war in your behalf, to protect you, 
call forth, use your ministering angels in your behalf because leadership today, it is so needed in the body of Christ. So Jesus had a vision. I love his prayer in the 17th chapter of St. John because his priestly prayer was for the body of Christ. He wants us united. He wants us to be of the same mind and the same heart. The day of Pentecost should not have been just an event that happened 2,000 years ago. That's why we need leaders that's willing to stand up, stand out. Sometimes in that vision, it's like, you know what? I have to sit someone down because they are destroying the vision that, and the plan that the Lord have given me. Sometimes that person even have to be asked to, to leave a ministry. And I'm saying, somebody saying, oh man, I know she's crazy now. No, she is not. That's scripture. And not only is it a scripture, there's times when if someone is destroying, is destroying the vision, and the plan that God have given you, if there's someone that's on assignment to come in and destroy, they have to be removed from the people. So again, I hope I really, really hope that these nuggets that I have shared with you today have been a blessing to you. We have to stand up and be prepared to stand alone. But we have to remember too that when we stand alone, that we are in a majority. Regardless of the number that we see with our natural sight, that there is an angelic host coming to our side to protect us. So the blessings of God be upon you. I am so grateful that you tuned in. I really, really hope that something was said that would be of eternal value to you. And if you remember with your heart and with your mind that we are a carrier of God's presence, it is up to you and it is up to me to restore the image of Christ on this earth. Please take a look at the underwriters of this broadcast. I forgot to mention to you, hopefully the next broadcast, Minister Tasley will join me again. She's had a full plate, a full schedule, and she knows that I know how important it is not to overextend ourselves because we love the Lord. It's easy to do. So the blessings of God be upon you richly. May his peace rest in your heart as you go about your day today. And would love us with a love that would not cease. I tried him and I found his promises are true. He's everything he said that he would be. The finest words I know could not begin to tell just what Jesus means to me. Than my mind can conceive more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest hopes and fun.